Okay, in this video, let's go through a simple example of why we account for deferred taxes the way we do. And the objective is so investors can recover the ETR, the effective tax rate. What is the cost of taxes to our business? That's why we account for deferred taxes the way we do. Let me show you an example. Let's suppose that there's an IRS, Internal Revenue Service, the entity that creates, that enforces the tax rules. And they have a tax rule that companies have to pay 21% tax anytime they receive cash, okay? That's the rule. Whenever you receive cash, that's when you owe the tax, okay? And that's kind of similar to how the IRS thinks about tax rules. So now we're gonna give a fact pattern here. The company makes $100 sales on account in 2020. On account means it's accounts receivable. They haven't received the cash yet. And they're not gonna collect the cash until 2021. So when they collect the cash, that's when they have to pay tax, right? They don't have to pay tax in 2020. They pay tax in 2021. So what is this company gonna look like from a financial accounting perspective, which is what we're learning about in this class? So here's the income statement for 2020 and 2021. They earn $100 of sales in 2020. They've got pre-tax income of $100. Now, why do we do this for GAAP purposes? Well, we wanna know what the company's performance was. They actually earned this $100 during 2020. They didn't collect the cash yet, but they earned it. And investors are interested in knowing how much money did you earn this period? Not how much money did you collect, but what did you earn? That's a better measure of financial performance. So that's what we put on the income statement. Now, I'm gonna put numbers in red that are wrong, but I just want to show you what it looks like if we don't account for deferred taxes in the way that we do. Well, we earned $100, but we didn't collect $100, so we don't have to pay any tax. Well, if we don't pay any tax, tax expense should just be zero, right? That maybe is your intuition before you take this class. We don't pay tax, so tax expense should be zero, and we've got net income of 100. Well, investors look at this income statement and say, wow, this company doesn't have to pay tax. They earn $100, they don't have to pay any tax. So that's what we should expect going forward, right? So if I forecast what this company is gonna earn in the future, I'll apply a tax rate of zero, and that's how I'll value the company. And that would be an error, wouldn't it? Because as soon as the company collects the cash, they're gonna to have to pay tax. So it's not that this company doesn't pay tax. So we could be misleading investors with this income statement. In 2021, what are the investors gonna observe? They're gonna observe no revenue. We earned our revenue last year. All we're doing is collecting the cash during 2021. So we've got pre-tax income of zero, but all of a sudden we have to pay $21 of tax because we're collecting the $100. So investors are gonna observe tax expense of $21 even though we didn't have any income. And they're gonna say, well, how come you have an infinite effective tax rate? How come you pay taxes to the government without making any profit? And so that on the other side is gonna confuse investors. So we don't do that, okay? That's wrong, that's not what we do. What do we do? We want investors to be able to recover the cost of taxes to our business. We have to pay a 21% tax rate on all the income that we have. So we want investors to recover that 21% tax rate when they take our tax expense and divide by our pre-tax income. We want a 21% ETR, so we need to record $21 of tax expense on our income statement and net income of $79. How do we accomplish that with journal entries? By the way, in 2021, we collect the cash, but we don't have any operating performance. We don't make any new sales or anything. So we want our income statement to be all zeros in 2021. Well, in 2020, the journal entries that we're gonna use, first, we make the sale, we credit sales, and we debit accounts receivable because we haven't received the cash yet for 100. But we want this $21 of tax expense, okay? We wanna debit tax expense for $21. We're not gonna credit cash because we're not paying the government yet. So what are we gonna credit? We're gonna debit tax expense $21 and we'll credit a deferred tax liability. Okay, this is deferred taxes. It's a liability account on the balance sheet and it has a value of $21 because as soon as we collect that $100, we're gonna to have to make a $21 payment to the government. So we've got an obligation or a liability. So we're setting that up with this journal entry. Okay, in 2021, we collect the cash. So we debit cash and credit accounts receivable. And now that we've debited cash, we need to pay the government. And so we're going to credit taxes payable to reflect our obligation to pay the government. And we're now settling our liability that we created last year. Okay, so we're reducing our deferred tax liability to zero. We created the deferred tax liability last year and we reduce it to zero this year. Now let's go through the opposite example with a deferred tax asset. 
Suppose the company receives $100 for selling a gift card this year, but they're not going to actually make the sale until next year. So Starbucks sells a $100 gift card, but the person doesn't actually redeem it for coffee until next year. Okay, so we make the sale, receive the cash in 2020. We have to pay tax in 2020, but we don't earn the revenue until 2021. Here's the income statement. In 2020, what are we going to have for gap purposes? Well, we collect $100, but we haven't earned it yet. We can't recognize revenue. We're going to have sales of zero. Pre-tax income of zero. And again, I'm going to go down the wrong path here. Well, since we collected $100, we have to pay the government $21 of that. If we just recognize that as expense as we pay it, we're going to have tax expense of $21 and an infinite effective tax rate. Investors are again going to say, you didn't have any income. How come you're paying taxes? And they're going to be confused. They're not going to know what the cost of taxes is to our business. Next year, when we actually recognize the $100 of sales, we have pre-tax income of $100, but we already paid tax on it. We're going to have zero tax expense because we already paid the cash last year. Net income of $100, and investors are going to come up with the wrong effective tax rate of 0%. Let's not do that. What should we do instead? Let's look at the, um, what we do uh, actually, how we do actually account for this. And so in the first year, we have zero uh, of sales, zero of pre-tax income. We've collected the cash. We haven't earned it yet. And we're not going to recognize any tax expense because we don't want to confuse investors. We're going to keep that ETR understandable. So we have a net income of zero and investors just kind of like aren't going to care about the income statement. They're not going to compute an ETR when we don't have any income. In the next year, we have sales of 100 pre-tax income of 100 and at this time, we want to recognize tax expense of $21, right? We want a 21% effective tax rate. We want $21 of tax expense and net income of 79. So how do we accomplish this? In 2020, what happened? We received cash for a gift card. So we debit cash and we credit deferred revenue for $100. Deferred revenue represents our obligation to satisfy the gift card. Okay. In 2020, we have to pay tax. So we have to credit taxes payable, but we don't want to debit tax expense because that would be misleading on the income statement. So what do we do? We credit tax, taxes payable. We owe the government, but what we're going to debit is a deferred tax asset. We're settling an obligation for a future expense. So what is the nature of the asset? The nature of the asset is I'm going to be able to recognize an expense in the future and not have to pay for it. Okay, I'm already prepaying for an expense that I'm going to recognize in the future. That's the nature of the benefit. So I get to record an expense, but don't have to pay for it. I've already paid for it this year. I don't have to pay for it next year. So we're setting up this debit in the deferred tax asset account, which is an asset. In 2021, what's going to happen? We're going to finally make that sale. The customer is going to redeem the gift card. So we're going to credit sales and debit deferred revenue to recognize the sale. And now we get to use the benefit. We get to recognize this tax expense, but we don't have to pay anything. We already paid last year. So we're going to debit tax expense. And rather than crediting cash because we're paying the government or something like that, we're crediting the deferred tax asset. We're now using the deferred tax asset to recognize tax expense. And so that's how the journal entries work behind the scenes. So in this video, we learn that timing differences between how we account for things in financial accounting and how the IRS accounts for things on tax returns give rise to accounting for deferred taxes, which entails deferred tax assets and deferred tax liabilities. Remember, the objective in accounting for temporary differences in deferred taxes is that the ETR, the effective tax rate, is not to be affected by these temporary book tax differences.